Welcome to this make.com advanced tutorial. So in this video, we're going to be using webhooks to then scrape a website, to then classify the website with AI and then store the results inside of a data store module right in, in make. So the example use case we're going to be doing here is when we get a positive reply uh, from our email outreach system, we're going to scrape the website and then we're going to look for a couple of variables and then store that uh, so we can later use it to, you know, to, for example, you know, score the leads for our different sales teams and assign it to different people. So without further ado, let's dive in. So first of all, why would you want to use a webhook as opposed to using a trigger? Well, it's actually the same thing. It's just that either Make has already integrated and built everything uh, for you to make it easy uh, versus, you know, you have to do it manually when they don't have an integration uh, with the partner yet. So in this case, we're going to use Smart Leads, which is going to be our email sending platform where we're going to receive the lead notification from and they don't have an native integration with make.com yet. So we're going to use the webhooks module. So just starting out in a new scenario, we're going to type webhook. We're going to click custom webhook. We're going to create webhook. Make sure to give it a name so you actually remember. We're going to say demo video positive reply, save. And as you can see, it generates this URL uh, that we can then take to our other tool to say like, hey, this is our webhook and this is where we want to receive the data. So we can just click copy address to clipboard. And then as you can see, there's this little spinning thing here that says stop. So what it actually does is it's now waiting for us to give the first sample data to then determine the data structure. So because Make at this point has no clue what to expect, you know, what variables are you going to send me, what will be the structure, it is waiting for an example for you uh, to send over. And a lot of the tools that you'll be integrating with, they will have a way to send example data over so that you can easily map the right variables. Let's go over to Smart Lead and then you go to Settings and Profile and you can see the Webhook tab. Then you can say add a webhook, you can give it a name. So let's say positive reply demo. You can paste the webhook URL. And here you have some settings that are specific to this tool. So event type we set as lead category updated and lead category we set it as interested. And as you can see, you have this button here that says send test to webhook. So when we click it and we go back to make, you can now see that it successfully determined the data structure and it now knows you know, what kind of data to expect and what the structure will be uh, for of that data. So just hit, hitting OK. And now we basically already have this set up. So we just click Add and it's basically done. And we go, can go through the next steps. So if you're paying attention at the beginning of the video, we're going to receive the leads notification. And then the next step is going to be to scrape their website. So to scrape a website in make.com, it's actually built in into the HTTP module. And then we can just do make a request. And it's super easy. We can just use this to basically scrape a website. So as the input, we're going to take the URL uh, from this lead, which will be their website, which is a variable that's passed right here. Uh, if you don't have the website, you could also take the email as an input and then use the text parser with the match pattern rejects uh, text module to basically you know parse email address at the at sign because you know everything after the at sign will be the domain uh, if you don't know how to do this check out my previous video on uh, make.com advanced flow and i have it in there so in this case let's keep it simple we'll just do website and we're going to add in https so we're just going to add in the protocol there uh, because that's usually not uploaded into a uh, smart lead we're going to leave everything else the same and we're just going to hit OK and save it. So now we scrape the website. We uh, want to classify the website contents into a couple of different variables. Uh, so in our case, you know, we get a lead. We want to see what kind of industry they're in. Uh, and we also want to see, let's say, if they have a sign up button on their website. I'm just making something up. That's the two things we want to check. Uh, and then let's actually also check if they have a Facebook pixel. I think that's a good example as well. So for this, we're going to use ChatGPT uh, just to feed the contents of the website, so the full HTML, and we're just going to ask it to uh, give us that data. So we're just going to say add another module. We're going to type in OpenAI. We're going to say create a completion. We're going to select a model. In this case, let's do just a smart model. We're going to add a message, and then under role, we're going to use system first to give it instructions. So I'm just going to type in instruction here. 
So I just made something up there. Uh, you're a web researcher, you get the raw HTML of a website, and you need to concisely extract variables. We tell you to make sure to only answer following our instructions. Um, so I think I said cat category uh, we want. Um, so let's say company. Right, and then I added the variables in here. So the company category, you know, uh, the industry category of the company, a sign up button, just answer yes or no. And the Facebook pixel, just answer yes or no in a small, small description so it kind of knows what we're talking about. Then we're gonna add a new message in here and we're gonna select for role, we're gonna say user. And then we're gonna take as input the data we just generated from the previous request, which is the website we scraped. And then I'm just gonna add it again as an instruction, you know, extract the variables. And I'm gonna get hit OK. Oh, so we actually have to set the max token. So I'm just gonna set that at zero, which means uh, it's unlimited. We don't really care because we just give it such a concise instruction. It shouldn't use too many tokens. Gonna hit save. Now the issue we have is that I don't really have a good way to trigger this webhook. So I'm just gonna change the variable here uh, to apple.com uh, so that it will just create that a website. So we're gonna imagine that once I trigger the test event uh, that it was Apple just because I can't really easily uh, manipulate the webhook as a trigger. So I'm just gonna hit OK, I'm gonna hit Save, and we're gonna hit Run Once. And then as you can see, it's waiting for data, so I'm just going back to Smart Lead, and I'm gonna click Edit, and I'm gonna send another test event. And as you can see, it's triggered. Now we imagine it's apple.com, so it's scraping the Apple website, and then it's using ChatGPT to get us the variables. So as you can see, it said the, the company category is technology, the sign-up button, it does not have a sign-up button on the Apple website, and the Facebook pixel, yes, they have that on there. But now that we have the variables, we wanna store them in the data store, and we're actually gonna run into a problem, which I will show you how to fix as well. So selecting the data store. So when do you wanna use the data store? Well, basically, if you would otherwise make a spreadsheet, uh, but you're only gonna use it inside of make.com uh, for other automations to reference. It doesn't really make much sense to do it in a Google Sheet. It's much better off just doing it in a data store. And the data store, it's just basically a spreadsheet built into make.com, very simple database, uh, not relational, so just 2D, uh, but it's a nice feature. So we're just gonna say add or replace a record. Then you can add a data structure here. So we're gonna say demo data store. And then for the data structure, you can either select one that you already have, or you can add a new one. I'm just gonna add a demo data store as a new one. And then we're gonna add three variables that we just made, which were all text. So it's the uh, category. We could put sign up button and the other one as a Boolean, uh, you know, like a yes or a no, true or false, but I'll just keep it yes, no, to keep it simple. And then Facebook pixel as well. And then as you can see, there's multiple types. And also you can say if it's required or if it's multi-line, uh, all that kind of stuff. And we'll just hit save. So now that we have the data structure and we have the data store, we hit save. And then we get the options to assign the variables uh, to the uh, variables in the data store. And now we run into the problem because company category, it's right inside of this result uh, from OpenAI. But if I put it here, if I just put a result here, we'll obviously have everything, all the different things we wanted to extract from the website. We just have it inside one field, which is not what we want. Actually gonna just hit okay and go back a step and change our prompting a little bit. So what we're gonna do now is actually instruct OpenAI to give back the results in something that's called JSON. Uh, so depending on how familiar you are with uh, JavaScript or other coding languages, uh, JSON is basically a way to make structured data. So you give a variable and then you give it a value. Um, so a key, it's called actually in JSON, uh, is basically a variable. So you say, um, you know, groceries, you say milk, or in our case, we obviously say company category, and then we give it a value. And then we say, uh, does it have a Facebook pixel? Yes or no. And then we say, uh, does it have a sign up button? Yes or no. And that's basically three variables. And we structure it in such a way that it's universally uh, readable, both by humans actually, as well as uh, computers. And uh, that, that way we can actually parse it really easily in make and get them as separate variables as opposed to one big text. And this is a super nice thing to use OpenAI for because it gives you the ability to, to go from unstructured data to structured data really easily. Uh, and it's actually one of the best use cases I've seen for, for AI. All right, so going back through OpenAI, we're gonna say extract the variables in JSON. So what we can do here is say JSON object as a response format. So now we just hit okay. 
we hit save and then we unlink this and we're going to add in one more module so we hit plus and then we just type in json and then as you can see it already says parse json i'm just going to link these together so as you can see we also need to give this a data structure so it knows what to expect so so during editing i realized i basically skip over an important note but i'm going to run the automation once so that the parse json module automatically determines the data structure so that we can set the variables for the final step all right back to the video and then it will throw some error obviously um, but at least all right so as you can see because we selected the output under show advanced settings we said output settings make sure it's a json object it now worked fine uh, it inputted this json into uh, the parse json module and then if we go to the data store as you can see it automatically detected the different variables and now we can just say sign up button here facebook pixel here and then company category here and now our entire flow is working it will get the new lead whenever a webhook is triggered it will scrape their website it will go to OpenAI to you know, get the right variables from that text, from that HTML that it scraped from the website. We'll get those variables and then output them in a JSON format. We will then parse that JSON format so we can use the individual variables inside the next step. And then it will save it to a data store for us to further reference. And uh, that's basically it. All right, so that was an advanced make.com flow. So if this was helpful, make sure to check out the links in the description. Uh, you can also download the JSON blueprints there by leaving your information. And if you want to see more of this, uh, make sure to comment, subscribe. Uh, also, let me know what is something you want to see next because I'm very open to suggestions. And uh, I hope to see you all in the next video.